Along the east coast of China's southernmost island province of Hainan sits a small town called Tanmen. Walking along its port, you'll see fishing boats swaying on the currents and fishermen busy unloading fish. The seemingly ordinary fishing town has in fact been here for more than 1,000 years. It's only one chapter of the history of the South China Sea, where for centuries, Chinese fishermen have been telling their stories. As early as 2,000 years ago during the Han Dynasty, it was the Chinese that first discovered the South China Sea Islands. The ancient book Yi Wu Zhi described the South China Sea reefs as a place with shallow waters, but many reef beaches, saying that ships cruising these waters easily got stranded. After the Tang Dynasty, as more people came to these islands, the central government of each dynasty started to administer the region. Among the Sisha Islands, archaeologists discovered a relic site on Ganchuan Island that dates back to the Tang and Song dynasties. And on that site, they unearthed the batch of porcelain as well as working and living tools belonging to the people of the same period. These historical treasures represent a deposit of ancient Chinese tradition, as well as their reliance on the ocean. It is also evidence of their life on the island. Since the Song Dynasty, people from Tanmen started to fish among the South China Sea Island. They were referred to as the earliest active explorers in the South China Sea, who first discovered and named the places in this area. In the handwritten Gunglu Bu, or the record of marine routes, which was passed down from generation to generation, fishermen marked out up to 100 places with maritime information. The South China Sea also offered the only passable route along the maritime Silk Road. Chinese ships carrying silk and gold sailed from the Lezhou Peninsula in Guangdong Province, passing by today's Vietnam, Thailand, and Malaysia for trade. Nanhai One, or South China Sea Island Number no. 1, was a merchant ship which sunk more than 800 years ago off the coast of Guangdong. While searching through the debris, people found more than 80,000 priceless artifacts. The scale of the recovery reflected the booming maritime commerce at that time. During the Yuan Dynasty, Kublai Khan sent astronomers to the Sisha Islands for astrometry and the Chinese fleet frequently patrolled the South China Sea. Later, during the Ming Dynasty, China deepened its ties with all countries near the South China Sea. Starting from 1405, the Ming Emperor Zhu Di sent Zheng He, along with more than 20,000 people and over 200 vessels, on seven expeditions in the Western Ocean, which is known today as the Indian Ocean. Through trade and communication, Zheng He solved conflicts, helped Southeast Asian residents to expel pirates, and preserved maritime peace. On Zhang He's navigational maps, he marked out islands on the South China Sea, giving them names and labeling their locations. Rulers of the Qing Dynasty marked the South China Sea islands on their authoritative maps to show their sovereignty over the region. The Qing government paid more attention to fishery resources and the protection of Chinese fishermen in those waters. Each winter, the northwest monsoon blew away Tanmen's fishing boat to the South China Sea. Several months later, the southwest monsoon blew these vessels home, fully loaded with seafood. 1,000 years later, the fishing boats have been replaced by modern ships, but the strong fishing traditions in the South China Sea remain unchanged. For fishermen here, the South China Sea is their ancestral sea, passed down to them from previous generations.